Buckle up, Buttercup. Live from Gloucester, Massachusetts. Podcasting around the world. Around the world. You're listening to the Gloucester Cast Podcast, a production of Joey Shimataro and Good Morning Gloucester Media. Kick back, relax, and enjoy the show with your host, Joey Shimataro, and his crew of Merry Castaways. No piping clovers will be intentionally harmed in the production of this podcast. Nailed it. Oh, Chris. Perfect. <laughs> Chris, is, Chris is looking at, he's got a few uh, strange nose hairs he's trying to pull out. You got it? <laughs> you see it's, that gray Chris, one? What's that? You got a, gray, you got a couple There's of gray, a gray ones. One up there. Yeah. Shit. That's when oh, you know you're in trouble when you get the gray okay. nose hairs. Good morning, Donna Arizona. Good morning, Joey Foote. Good morning, Walt Kalenda. They're with us right now. Um, Susan Casey Lips is with us. It's Cast 455. Right now we're joined by Paul Horvitz. Good morning, Gloucester. We're joined by Chris McCarthy. Good morning, Gloucester. Happy birthday, and, Joe. And, and Bo. And Nicole Schraft is with us. Good morning. Uh, Pat and Jimmy and Jimmy... Pat and Jimmy Dalpierre is with us. Good morning. Hey, good morning. What's the number, Joe? What's the n- magic number? Uh, the magic number uh, to the 21, de- uh, 11 days. 11, 11 days. days. I'm almost in single digits. Uh, Jimmy Capello is with, with us here, and he helped set up this morning as well. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Joanne Wood, John Hiller, Mike Favaza, Tim, Mer- uh, Tim Renane, high school friend, uh, Nathan Maynard. Wow, my mom is with us. My mom did. Hey, this might be the. This is our lucky day. We got to go play the lottery. My mother did not, or Felicia did not text or call at eight fifty-five a.m. This I'm I'm gonna go go play my. Gonna go play the lottery now. It's an omen. I think they're busy. Uh, They're busy baking. Eight fifty-five. Yeah. No. Great. Well, you can turn your phone back on now, Joey. Uh, Chris Connor says, "Go grab my laptop camera." He said, <laughs> Actually, uh, I should. Yeah, just grab it. You know, you never know what you're gonna have when you open up Connor's laptop. What? What? <laughs> you might not. <laughs> might be, uh, yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> you might get think. I want the CDC. I want the <laughs> CDC to open that up for me. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta get it with the the black light, and uh, to make sure there's no. Yeah. Tim. <laughs> Tim. Uh, Renee chimed in. And two high school buddy of ours. I know, I know. While we got everybody's attention, uh, Trisha, uh, Trisha Clinch is with us, and she donated today's prize. If you share the podcast and you type shared in the show notes, I mean in the comments on Facebook, you will be entered to win this unbelievable soap basket. Um, and if you're on Good Morning Gloucester, you have, you have the – look at this. This is, this is uh, a gift basket of, of soaps from Drip Soap. And – they're beautiful soaps. This one is the seaweed scrub right here. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, they smell fantastic. Uh, day at the Beach, which smells like a day at the beach. I think there's one called Greasy Pole. <laughs> oh, seriously. <laughs> Hold on. Paul? 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 Where, where Paul? Do I, the school closed or on vacation, can you tell? Paul's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it does say Greasy Pole. It's a, oh. it's greasy pole. Yeah, hold it right up, Paul. There you go. Yeah, yep. the greasy push. pole. That's right. Uh, 
You're welcome. Thank you, Trish, for uh, <laughs> thank you very much for for sponsoring the gift this week. Uh, good morning, Nina Testaverde. Um, so there we go. We're back. I have a question for uh, for Chris McCarthy. Go ahead. Does that soap fit in his mouth? You know, like when he was a kid, his mouth put in there all the time. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, do, that that wasn't your real question. <laughs> Does it fit where? <laughs> he wants to know if it fit in my mouth. I don't think that was really what he wanted to ask. Well, uh, we're coming up later, we have uh, Superintendent of Schools of Gloucester, Massachusetts, Ben Loomis, with us, and uh, Board of is it Board of Health or Commissioner of Health? What is Karen Carroll? Director. Director of Public Health. Public Health. The city. She's the health person that does health things. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy. <laughs> uh, she's great. Uh, Hey, Joey, uh, Brenda Grimes Davis shared it. Joey Foote shared it. So Susan if you, you have Susan Casey uh, lips it. Mike Favaza so far. Mike Favaza shared it. So if you all you have to do is type shared and 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 into the into the uh, comments. Uh, Connor uh, shared it. The McCarthy should be banned. And call it and and, and the McCarthy. <laughs> we like that they share it though. So we got that going for us. I listen. Oh, I want to do a shout out to my niece Amanda Mohan, who has her own podcast. It, there's probably very little crossover with her audience and our audience. It's a, <laughs> a younger demographic, but I listened to it today. It was, it was very, very entertaining. Uh, she did a, she did a whole podcast about dating apps and stuff, and um, I was horrified. I, I really didn't want to listen to it because I was scared, like that there might be something I like didn't really just didn't want to hear. Uh, but no, it was actually it was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, so there's that. So we had, so how many snow days were there last, this past week for, for the kids? One. One. Yep. One for, for, did every, every school system, uh, recognize a, um, a, a, school, a snow day or did some have, uh, still have to report to remote? Uh, there were some who were doing remote. We just we said okay. We've been in school every day since whenever, and it, everyone needed a day. Go out and make snow angels and make cookies. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were talking earlier, Paul, about an article that you had read. What, what, can you share it with us? Oh yeah. Well, it was something a letter that someone shared with me. It was a school superintendent down in West Virginia who uh, who, who wrote a letter to the whole school community to the school district saying we are definitely we are having a snow day. Snow days are sacred. Uh, they're a tradition of childhood, and uh, and the teachers need it this year. And we're not going to ask anyone to go virtual, go home, and have fun. And I thought that that's, was cool. <laughs> yeah. that's great. Uh, and there's the link. yeah, there it is, Jefferson County yeah. Schools. Yep. Pat, Pat just shared the link in the uh, on the yeah. Facebook feed. It's so a great letter. Yeah. <laughs> so we got that going for us. Um, so so now that it's crunch time. It's officially crunch time. We have uh, how many days? Friday is Christmas, so we got four day, four four shopping days left for Christmas. Oh, wait a second! Shared free. Joe Higgins, uh, fish fish printer, just wrote free navigators and placemats at his shop. Joe, do you have to do anything to get a free one, or do you just show up and get a free one? Are you handing these things out, and uh, also type in the address of your shop in Rockport, Joe, so we know. I just ruined a placemat with a glue gun the other day. So I So you better get over there. I need a new I need a replacement placemat. Well when you lived in Rockport it would have been a much quicker, uh, much uh close uh, easier drive to get to Joe's shop. But uh, where is everybody at as far as being done with shopping and wraps? I have all of my shopping done, but I have wrapped nothing and I have a lot of presents this year. <clears throat> I'm completely it, done shopping, and I'm uh, having a wrapping marathon today and tomorrow. Do you enjoy wrapping, Nicole? Um, yes. Let's let's okay. hear you wrap, Nicole. Come I do. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm very tempted. We should have talked about that earlier. I would have pulled something off. Um, yeah, I, I like wrapping, but uh, I like wrapping, and then like when I'm 75 percent done, I start to then hate wrapping. So. Yeah, I, I I I dread I dread wrapping, um, but when I'm actually doing it, 
it, it, go, it seems to go by a lot faster, but I'm not a perfectionist when I rap. I, I just kind of like, I just go like this and, and like I'm on a tape going all directions. And I, call, I, I, I feel like over the years, everybody knows that I do a shitty rapping job. So my, the bar has been set very low for me. Yeah, I wish we had, um, I wrote a blog post for, for you years ago about this. I wish I had thought ahead when we first had kids and done things differently. But my family, um, you know, not that we had any great means, but Christmas was always a big deal in my family from my grandparents and my parents and everything else. And uh, so we kind of raised the bar high the kids first couple of Christmases. And it's hard to go <laughs> backwards, not with the wrapping, but with like what we did. And so I wish we hadn't done that. But um, also with the, you know, Finn's hopefully Finn's not watching, but Finn's 11 and a half. And he's still uh, he still expects some things from Santa under the tree. So that takes wrapping to another level. You have the Santa, Santa stuff, parent stuff, stuff with actors, stuff with Finn. So the organizing sends me over the edge. My mother gave a great tip. She uses the bags, the Christmas bags that you can buy at the dollar store. Yeah. And I think those are brilliant. I, I did that a while back and I kind of got off track. Um, everybody got like, you know, because it's super easy. Wow, Lynn Scannell's in Reno. I know. They've been all over the place. You've been following them? Hi, Lynn. Hi, I Phil. Those people. Uh, Paul, what, do you do the rapping or does the wife do the rapping? Uh, group effort. But yeah. my mother-in-law was a Vermont Yankee, and so uh, the wrapping gets recycled year after year. You know, you, you, you unwrap it very carefully. You don't you don't oh, use tape. Wow. On. You wrap it back and put a pilot and put it away. In fact, she was so frugal that we would get cards from her. You know, like on on the and, and it, on the present, and there was no name on the card. <laughs> It wasn't signed, but you knew it was her, so you could reuse it every year. That's hilarious. Well, that, that's well, taking people, that people who grew up, uh, you know, on farms in the Depression learned to. <laughs> right, right. Uh, McCarthy, I don't know what's going on with him over there. Pat and Jimmy, are you, who does? I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that. <laughs> yeah, you go out on that limb. That Jim does zero rapping and Pat does all the rapping. And, and so, so thank you, by the way, for, for our Christmas presents. Oh, you're welcome. That was fun. And so Pat got. Kate, uh, espresso martini mix thing from Tono, mm -hmm. and me a bottle of Ryan and Wood whiskey, which Ooh. only thing that I when I do the nighttime podcast that's my drink. I I, I drink Ryan and Wood's whis whiskey when when uh, we do the podcast. So that was keeping it local. Yeah, and two very very well appreciated gifts because those are things that we will totally enjoy. Good. Now, can I ask you a question? Because I'm not no, too familiar no. about the uh, Tono. Um, is it mixer or is it is it ready to go? It's ready to go. Ready to yeah. go. Wow! Yeah. Right out of the bottle. If Espresso needed. martini. Chris, did you guys pick up any 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 of those? We did. We did. Um, I I got Pepto Bismol from Pat, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it said add vodka to it. But uh, I have a, a couple of those bottles from uh, Tono that I've yet to crack open. But uh, one, one bottle is the espresso martini from Pat and so Pat and Jim, thank you for um, the, al the, the alcohol. So the question that I have for you, because you haven't opened them yet, are those gifts for people that haven't given you gifts yet? Just in case they show up with a gift, you can say, oh, here's this is what I have for you. <laughs> no, I, I'm not like you, Joe. I don't. I, I, are you talking? No, we're waiting to hear from you. I don't. I don't. I don't re-gift. No. Okay. Did you see what Joe Higgins just wrote? So go ahead, Pat. Give, give it to us. Wow. Pat, Pat's going to put it on the screen anyway, but go ahead. Nicole. Uh, it says, uh, well, he gave his address, 46 Bearskin Neck, uh, Rockport. But it said also buy a print and get a $100 hmm. gift card to Tono. There you go. Oh. That's a win. So you could buy a print. Not a cheap print, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I want to buy a $46 print. Can I buy a $46 print? Yep. You go to Toronto and, and get, get and, your gator. And, and I want to get gator. I want a placemat. I want to buy a forty-six dollar print. I want a free gator. I want a free placemat. And I want to go to Tano. I'm going to leverage this and go to Tano 
and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get uh, espresso martini bottles. Uh, okay, I think that's a brilliant move. There you go. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Uh, so now, let me jump in here and defend him because he does do his own, pretty much his own shopping and wrapping. Well, here, so Jimmy, why don't you explain? Because you have Christmas shopping day. You have a day designated for that. Yeah, yeah. I I usually go shop until you drop day, and uh, you just get it done. Get her done. Did you do all? Because you said it was going to be all in Gloucester. What were some of the yes. What were some of the places you went for gifts? Uh, I'm not saying. Because uh, <laughs> I, uh, it would I be, can't. It would be a give. It would be a dead giveaway. Yes, it would be a giveaway because if I said the certain store that I went to, then everyone would almost picture what I got. So, um, um, I will say that I did walk up and down Main Street a few times, and I pretty much stayed right there. Yes, until um, all of a sudden they said card denied. And I went, it's time. <laughs> I I bumped into Jimmy at Victoria's Secret. It was funny. We were in there at the same time. Yeah. In in the dressing room. <laughs> oh my god. So you went to the Franklin for the uh who went to the Franklin? It was uh, Nicole, I think. Oh Nicole went to the Franklin. Oh. We did when on a Wednesday night when we knew we had a snow day on Thursday, thanks to Paul, we um went into the Franklin for our final final supper before they closed down. And I had um we had we had a few things, some sushi and a couple salads, um, couple hot and dirty martinis, but also uh the best soup I've ever had. Like hands down the best soup I've ever had in my entire life. What what, what was the soup? Uh butternut squash. Oh. Butternut squash soup. Amazing. Kate makes a really good one. Uh, Felicia does too. Yeah. I don't know uh, if Kate's watching. Maybe she'll share the recipe. Um, so there's that. Uh, where are we at? Wait, so who had this topic? Who makes their bed every morning? That was McCarthy. And he, and the guy just ran he's gone off to make his bed. There he is. <laughs> He's getting treats for Bo right now. That, I know where that spot is. That's I'm surprised Bo is nipping out of his oh, right he now. He could be picking up Bo's. No, right there. Hey, Mr. Wonderful. Hey. Nice to have you back. Uh, the question was, who makes their bed every morning? And I said, is that even a question? <laughs> I, I got to go with Nicole on that. Go ahead. That's not even really a choice. I would not be so able to find that. Mean, in the morning. So, yeah, that, yes, our bed is every morning. Yeah. I mean, early, you know, first, almost first thing. I wonder what at what age or what the impetus is for when you're a college student, no one makes their bed, right? And then I wonder, like, is it when you get your first place and you want to look at it? It's when you realize how wonderful it is to walk into the room at night and it's all made for you. It's just a wonderful feeling. So, it's when you realize that. Yeah. How about the turn down service? Did Jimmy do the turn down service and put the <laughs> on, on the pillow? He, he, he does do a turn down service for me every night. He checks my blanket, makes sure it's turned around the right way. He I does. Am, I am not going to tell you what I put down. On the hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Questions I can't give away. Answers. Family show, Jim. Family show. You should know. I know. Well, and, and the man just chimed in too. Be careful, Pat and Jim. What you say? Morning, Safadia. So Safadia says, "I make the bed every morning, and my children did when they were living with me. I couldn't leave house if not." I think that's Italian woman thing. Right? And I, I, was, well, I had a, I had an Irish mother, and it was the same rule. Oh, there you go. There Absolutely. You go. And and because of that, I made my bed every morning in college too. Because that's wow. In once college. you do it, you do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just happy on this either. I don't want to wake up and walk in and see dirty dishes in the kitchen. I I I, I that is a pet peeve of mine. Like as, as soon as if I'm cooking, I'm, I'm cleaning as I'm cooking, and they're getting put yeah. away. Yeah. As, as they, because it's so much easier when you're all done. You're not looking at a big pile of dishes in the. Mm -hmm. in the and and I hate that the the idea of dirty dishes and this. And the other thing is when you cook something like in a pot on a stove, and it kind of like you know there's like it's crusty on the on the sides. Just fucking run the hot water and put some soap in it and let it sit. So it'll be like even if you don't clean that right away, 
like 20 minutes later, it's going to be that much easier for you to clean it. Like it, it makes yeah. no sense to leave one of those kind of pots <laughs> like in the sink overnight to dry out and all that stuff to make it 10 times harder to clean. Somebody in my house, and no one will fess up to it, about three weeks ago, unloaded the dishwasher, which I appreciate immensely, but it was still dirty. And <laughs> unloaded an entire load of dirty dishes without noticing and put them all away. <laughs> like they were, I mean, like salad dressing still on the bowls, his ice cream still in their ice cream mugs. The entire load somehow got back into the cabinet, which then meant I had to wash like everything, because how do you decide what was actually in the dishwasher? And, <laughs> and no one will fuss up to it. And how do you not notice that? That's funny. You notice that you're putting away filthy dishes, but. <laughs> in, your, in your house? Who knows? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul. I, I came in and I thought I was helping. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Nicole, is it, is it tough yeah. raising three boys? Yes. Very, very. <laughs> That's why I'm here Joe, right now. Joe, another yeah, Chris. question that that that's somewhat really. I'm curious, pulling the group about uh, who actually goes through the trouble of um, when when you're in the bathroom and you got to replace the toilet paper. You take it out of the package. You just leave it sitting on the toilet, or you actually put it on the the handle for the next. person. On the roll. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's you put common. it on the handle. I put it on. The I don't. Roll. Yeah. You just stick it on. Right, so, I don't. So then, take that one step further, Joey. When you put it on the roll, it's you put it so the paper is coming is is coming over the top towards oh, you, yeah. coming oh, out of the bottom. Thing going right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anybody, anybody that does it under is uh, you can't trust. They're them. savages. That's They're savages. right. Thank you. They're, Thank you. A filthy animal. I, I have five sisters. I've been trained well. So it is on the roll, placed over the top, with folded that you can grab the first one easy. Safatia so says that Rosaria and her were the dishwashers when they were young. But there, I think there's like five kids in that family. So how did it, what did everybody else do? Uh, that's what I want to know. Uh, you're you're going to find out in a minute, I bet. I'm sure <laughs> we're going to find out exactly. Uh, so there's that. Um, who who got to watch the last Lightkeeper documentary on Amazon? Uh, Jim and I did. So we, was it worth watching? Because you had to pay for it, right? Yeah, I, I think it was two ninety nine. It might have been three ninety nine. Was it, uh, was it a, a so Paul St. Germain, who's the straight is it the Straitsmith Lightkeeper? Uh, Thatcher. Thatcher Island. Thatcher one? Island. Um, he is, uh, he was featured in it, right? He was in the first uh, quarter, or so maybe first fifteen or twenty minutes. Features um, Paul St. Germain and some fascinating stories um, from Thatcher Island Lighthouse uh, history. And then it follows with some other stories, which, which were very interesting. It kept us intrigued. Um, of course, the local stuff was good. It's on Amazon. I think it was $2.99 for a rental. Um, it was a snow day watch. It was well worth it. The other one that I'd like to recommend in a streaming recommendation uh, in your lockdown days is the um, Netflix. We are the champions. Thank you. Netflix. We are the champions. And one of the episodes is uh, about the cheese rolling in England, Glo Gloucester, England. in Gloucester, England. And it is, well, all the episodes are very interesting. That, mm -hmm. that was the first one we watched and we recognized it right away. Uh, it's, it's a quirky. Oh, hi Tucker. <laughs> wow, what a beautiful dog. That's, that's Tucker. <laughs> okay, uh, Tucker. Down you go. Tucker, oh, Tucker heard cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Anthony was the only son. So Matzo was the only son. He was the king, so he didn't have to do much, I'm guessing. Grace was the baby, so Rosaria and I were the servants. That's why we know how to do everything. <laughs> but I hope you're. I hope, you, I hope you, yeah, uh, Grace isn't, isn't watching right now. Uh, Here's a good question from uh, Trisha. Who donated the uh, soap. So I will take this opportunity, seeing yeah. that she, she donated this soap basket. For, her company is Drift Soap Company. Do you have the link, Pat? I will get it right now. So it's, Pat's going to put a link. Um, this is So if you type shared in, in a comment on, in the, on, the, on the Facebook page that this is on, 
you will be entered to win this at the end of the podcast. We will pick it at the end. Uh, but Trish said, I'll, I'll, I'll read her. Oh, where is it? Trish says, who puts grocery shopping carts back in their designated parking lot areas? I do. Uh, or, yeah. or up by the store. Or up by the store. Yeah. So now, are you... Are okay, you, so here's a question. I'm going to take this because I'm just assuming no one's going to admit to not putting them back. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's so here's, I think this is the better question. The better question is... Depends on the do weather. You, do, you, do, you, do you park closer to the front of the store or do you park closer to where the, the cart return is? I don't like to park near the cart return because it's... It can get dangerous there with ding, but and I actually like to park out a ways and walk, do the walk. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I don't think to even when I'm going grocery shopping for a lot, I don't think to park closer to the the cart return thing, which I probably I think would be a good idea. Uh, Brenda sh- Brenda Leahy, who had, who ran the um, the blood drive at the Elks, she says she puts other people's back as well. So, yeah. Oh, or I offer it up if it's a good one. Scotty Mack shared it. Arlie Pett shared it. So these are people. Are they, Scotty Mack, how come you're not on the on the podcast? I thought he was. Good. I don't know what he's doing. He, I think Scotty Mack had a, a, had a long day last night. Walt <laughs> Kalenda shared it. Uh, so there you go. My mother parks where the cart return is. So that's interesting. Um, the and the other part about this whole thing is why why do people go? Why do people like flock to the grocery store before every storm. Like why is <laughs> what is that all about? What do you think? Because they don't think that they're gonna be able to get out for four or five days. Well and and look at the things they buy. It's just bizarre some of the yeah. Uh, the milk and milk and uh, milk and bread? And, and to, well no, no. They'll they'll buy bags and bags of potato chips or all the toilet paper. Remember at the beginning of the pandemic? You know like well, we, uh, we went on Wednesday night after Franklin because I did not want to be home with two kids with not the you know, appropriate snacks in the house on a snow day. So so my, my daughters my daughters always say there's nothing to eat in the house. Yeah, that's Thatcher for sure. And I say to them relentlessly, if you text me or let me know anything that you want, I'm, it's going to be in the house for you. But I can't guess because it want, I, if I get in a routine of buying certain items for them, then they're like, you always get the same things. And then they just sit there. And then I'm like, I get aggravated because they 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 don't they don't give me any hints of what they want. All right, I got to take this. Uh, Chris, do you have your, your phone case? Because I'm going to put I'm going to highlight you because you, you want to talk about your new phone case. I got to take this. Hello? Yeah, I um. Purchased this new phone case from a company by the name of Scooch, S C O O C H. I don't know if you can see the the back of it, but um, it was one of those things where I was scrolling through Instagram, and uh, they were advertising these uh, the phone cases, and it, it meets uh, three of my most important needs. The first one is. It has a little compartment um, under the case where I can put three credit cards and some cash so I don't have to um, carry around a wallet as, as well. Um, it also, you can't see it. Um, I think I might have froze. But it also nope. has a magnet. So when I'm in my car, I can place it up on the the magnet. Um, And then the last thing it has is um, by my my bed, I have a charger and I can let it sit on on the charger. So um, not many, you know, allow you to to do that. And not uh, those three important um, features. So if if those are important to you, go to scooch.com. I put the link up. Thank, thanks for that. Cool. that uh, yeah, I saw it. If your camera wasn't so fuzzy, it'd be you could tell it a little bit more. But but it is. I saw it. I'll, I will vouch for Chris's his uh, for this yeah, case. Yeah, I saw it. It was awesome. It's uh, it it covers a lot of ground. Like 
Usually a case has one or two features. This has like all it's the features. All the really features. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, and, but the also part, I don't know if you mentioned this when I was outside. It has a nice tactile feel on the side. Someone's got, uh, someone's playing this in the background. I think Karen Carroll might have her, have it playing in, a, in another thing. Hi, Karen. Okay. So um, it has a nice tactile feel like some of the lines. Who's who's playing this on a second device right now? Not me. Okay. It's like our faculty Zoom meetings. <laughs> There's always, always like five who log in and you can hear everything in the background. We all mm -hmm. there. Like. No, I think maybe it went away. I think it went away. All right. Uh, oh, Paula Ryan ordered a, a case, but. Yeah. Any GMG promo code, says Mr. Connor McCarthy. No, not for, not for the scooch cases from China. I'm sorry. We didn't have, we didn't, we didn't have our, uh, our China. Okay, let me go back here. Uh, one second here. Okay. Stupid things people do on Facebook. Oh, that's an all-day topic, isn't it? <laughs> that's an all-day topic. Whose was it? Was it yours? No, I think it's Chris's. Mr. McCarthy, go ahead. was it stupid things that people do on Facebook <laughs> I'm, I'm new to Facebook as uh, some of you know so it, it's been you know interesting to me to uh, see what people will uh, post but I, I came with this question when I saw someone wishing their dog a happy birthday and <laughs> people following them were wishing the dog happy birthday and i'm like this is this is what people do on facebook is they they wish their dogs say and other people chime in and say oh yeah happy birthday hey scoochie scoochie poo <laughs> i'm like wow All right now i know why it took long to, to get onto facebook so there, there are other things but i don't want to upset it. it's it's just Everyone knows that I'm a clown. Um, I like to be a clown. I, I'm sure people would been on some of the stuff that, that I post, but um, it just it was funny when I when I you know saw someone wishing their dog a happy birthday. So I'm I'm curious if if you know you, any of you have seen some police stuff, stuff that people do on Facebook or a period. I saw one of the dumbest things that I've seen, uh, and I'm not going to mention the place. And I don't want anyone else to mention the place. An employee of a restaurant laid out someone that came in and bought a ridiculous amount of uh, gift gift cards, mm -hmm. like over a thousand dollars worth of gift cards. Took a picture of the receipt, the name of the person, Ooh. and and and, and said this. It's a piece of crap because they didn't even tip me on buying these these gift cards, wow. and I all I could I just felt so bad for the owner of and the manager of the the restaurant who someone's going in there spending over a thousand dollars and they and they and the an employee took it upon themselves to put this person on blast that's you know helping support the restaurant I was beyond I was freaking out. Uh, oh, Chris Thompson he says. Uh, oh, Chris Thompson. Why does someone has this on in the background? It's driving me nuts. Uh, Chris Thompson says the people that give their pets their own Facebook page drives him nuts. And I think that's, I think that's a really good. One. There's a lot of Instagram uh, dog uh, people that have Instagram pages for their more than Facebook, I think. And um, that's, that's who? Uh, five toes. Oh, oh Polly five, five toes. But but that's the the seagull from the uh, seagull from, yes, the, yeah. from the Lannan, the Thomas Lannan. They have a uh, a page for him. But it's interesting out on the boat. Like you haven't scenic vistas. It's not like some dog that's in someone's right, right. you know living room getting the same shots of the same thing. I put you know I, I yeah, hope I'm not, you know I hope I'm not guilty because I posted a picture of DC last night on the blog. Oh, I love. I, I like to follow DC myself. So, but I, but it, I, I try to be. But I, but I, 
the uh, how many times I posted. But though, then, then DC doesn't have her own uh, Instagram account or Facebook page. Like Mike Coderre, I'll call out Mike Coderre. He he has an Instagram page for for his dog, and uh, I, I refuse to um, connect with with any dog Instagram page or or Facebook page. Ah, there you go. Uh, so <laughs> Fox, Sorry, I'll Mike. Take, so Fox says I'll take a dog's breath rather than the lies and negative posts that people post. <laughs> I don't know if there's that. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I I couldn't agree with you more. I I hesitate to even say this, but I definitely won't say who it is and I won't say it, but uh, somebody last week posted something about one of their children's teachers, um, not here at my school, but, and I, and I know the person who did it and I genuinely like him, but not only was I horrified that he, he named the teacher, but the people who chimed in and fueled his fire rather than saying, Hey, it's kind of disrespectful out there especially you know um but yeah that had me mad for about 48 hours yeah think about the situation you're putting your child in yeah like you know the teachers they're not supposed to take it out on the child or the child's grades but my something in the something in the, the back of us a lot of it subject, subjective grades and uh that that a minus may turn into a b plus or that that's that c minus might turn into a d plus right, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Walt Kalenda says, to be fair, my dog set up her own Instagram page. It wasn't. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm ready to bring Karen Carroll and uh, Ben Loomis. Ben Loomis is not in the green room yet, though. Uh, Karen, I don't know if her internet is working. She's only got one bar, so we'll hold off on that. Oh, she's back now. She's got very oh, she's little. She's got very little connection. Oh, she, I don't know what that's all about. Uh, so there's that. So so I we were talking the other day. I think we, I don't know if it was with Felicia or Chris or someone. Do you who remembers in the 1970s for Pee Wee football sitting out and you're 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 like eight years old. I don't know how old you are when you're Pee Wee football. Maybe 12 years old. Canning in front of the banks, in front of the, the, the supermarkets, and you had to have the cans with the slot in the top, and you go out there, and people would help support the um, the uh, the organizations. They, what's the matter, Pat? Yeah. When I saw that canning for Pee Wee football, I thought you literally meant you were like canning fruit or vegetables <laughs> to raise money. I did not know this canning. For kids. <laughs> Nicole, Nicole, did, Nicole, did you know the reference? I, I did. I did. Yeah. I uh, I went to Farmer Browns in Danvers last year and uh, on the way to Essex Tech for a hockey game. And there were kids canning, but they were also selling uh, bags of popcorn. And so, you know, I have no affiliation with it was Middleton, and but I you always feel bad. So I bought two bags of popcorn because the kids were in the back seat; they were hungry. Bags of popcorn were like thirty five dollars a piece. What? So we'd, we'd already agreed to buy two. They were gourmet, and I was like. What team does that? So I had to go to the ATM in the store and buy the two like crazy expensive bags of popcorn. Wow. I missed the good old like quarter in the cup thing instead. So Fadi says they still do it. I, I, you know, maybe it's just I don't get downtown that often in the fall because we're so busy at work. I don't remember the last time I saw a bunch of kids uh, can, I Girl canning. Scouts with the cookies. cookies, but not canning. Girl Scout cookies are all online this year. It's not on the news. Oh, well, that's a good, that makes sense. That definitely it. makes sense. Mike Bertolino says, go Rockets. Go Tigers. I'm saying go Tigers. How do you like that, Mike Bertolino? Oh, uh, do, <laughs> do you remember, uh, do, do you, you know what we're talking, did you know the reference or did you think we were talking about canning uh, tomatoes? <laughs> Paul Horowitz. I'm sorry. I, 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 I knew what you meant. You did. Oh, okay. come on, people. Pat. <laughs> I'm just glad Pat's not trying to. Uh-oh. Take this. Uh, uh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, talk uh, about this for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pat will take you. Pat, uh, Pat, your mom. Oh, I think Ben Lomas is, doing is this, saying not to change the subject, but a big shout out for Steve and Zach Noble for shoveling veteran cemetery graves and placing wreaths on them for Christmas. Yesterday, we went to Beachbrook Cemetery for the Wreaths Across America uh, event, 
and uh, there was a good turnout of volunteers, including sea cadets and several uh, citizens who came to help clear about a foot of snow off the grave sites wow. to facilitate the uh, reef laying. Uh, there were 400 wreaths, Amanda Orlando and Joe Orlando and Adam Kukuru and um, V. Chiverini were there. See, how did I do with those names? They do okay with those? Yeah. I hope it was reasonably not too bad. Um, and uh, they were late, mayor, mayor, me, the, mayor, the mayor was there, Senator Tarr was there, Representative Ferrante was there. Um, many, many people came out to help clear the clear the sites and to um, and to lay the rays. Um, there you go. So Chris has got Chris has two things going on. Okay, I'm gonna I have to take Chris off of one. Uh, can you take my mother's comment off of there for a second? Yes. Uh -huh. All right. I'm gonna take yeah. Chris off of there. We're gonna bring Chris in there. Uh, so we're gonna bring Karen. We're gonna bring Karen. Oh, much better. Is that the? Uh, did you did you did you touch the uh, screen the the um. Did you do the black light on the keyboard? Chris. Maybe no audio or no. Go sideways. Go turn the turn the thing, Chris. Turn it. That drives me nuts. It looks like Karen's this. back. He was. He, all right, Karen's back. All right, we're gonna bring Karen in right now. Uh, Karen, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys? We're doing good morning. Great. We're doing fantastic. Um, can you tell me what is your I I, I, I butchered it earlier. What what is your official uh, title? Uh, that's fine. I am the public health director for the city of Gloucester. Public health director. That's right. Okay. Yes. I think so I call I'm you the, the president. Health department, um, and I sit under the board of health, which is a group of voluntary board members who oversee the health department. Um, <clears throat> But I oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the actual health department. I see. So now that we've been going, you know, kind of reverting back to what, what we're, where we were last year, um, can you reflect a little bit on um, what guidance you may have that people don't know about uh, that we're that will be going forward? As far as um, are we expecting further tightening of um, of things that we can do and stuff? Yeah, I mean, unlike last spring, we kind of did this like blanket shut down everything because we didn't really know how the disease was transmitted and we there was so much we didn't really understand. So we understand a lot more um, and we now have nine months, 10 months of data to know where transmission is happening and understand it a lot better. So, you know, we're probably not going to see those kind of blankets, like everything shut down at once kind of thing, like we did back last March. Um, but in terms of rolling back and adjusting and shutting things down, we may very well have times, and we certainly have already through COVID, where either businesses or, you know, whoever needs to either um, shut down temporarily or part of their business, part of their operation, uh, part of their restaurant, because usually because of staff shortages. Um, so we definitely see that. Uh, and the other thing that we always have to worry about is the capacity of the health. If the hospitals become inundated and, you know, we're definitely watching those rates, the ICU capacity, um, and the non-ICU beds. We watch them locally, we watch them for our region of hospitals, and we watch them as does the governor's office. Um, so, I mean, that's that's the bottom line really, is we have to make sure that there's capacity within the hospitals to handle any surges. And if those get full, then yeah, we all have to pull back further so that, um, you know, we have we have hospitals beds available and staff staffing's the other key limitation there right and how are the numbers so far like how far away from having problems you know what how far away are we there <laughs> um you know we say in covid you're one good outbreak away from disaster uh you know it can happen and we've had a few surprises earlier in the fall where we've had some big outbreaks 
um, that were quickly contained. So that was great. Um, but then, you know, we've, we've had a steady increase over the last few weeks since Thanksgiving, like the rest of the country. Um, the last five to six days in, in Gloucester anyway, our numbers are coming down and that's great. So we're optimistic. We also measure the wastewater. I think we talked about this long ago. Um, we measure the virus level in our wastewater here in the city. So last week, we just got our report for last week. In the last two weeks in a row, the wastewater virus level has come down significantly. So that's a good sign because that measures the amount of virus in the general population, whereas our case numbers only measure and show us who's gone for a test. And that usually means they've been sick or been exposed. So um, those two things together are really positive signs. But we also know Christmas is coming. The mall is full today. Um, and, you know, some of the indoor sports are back up and running. Those things are, are can be high risk, high transmission. So we definitely saw a spike after Thanksgiving. We expect after Christmas we will. We're urging people to just try so much to stay apart, um, to do things outdoors if you can, and just get through this one weird Christmas so hopefully next Christmas we can be more back to normal. Um, and in terms of you know sh shutting down for holidays, I think if people go into retail environments, we're not seeing a lot of transmission in shops. Um, so if people go in carefully to shops, wearing their face covering, keeping six feet apart from others in the shop, um, it should be okay. You know we haven't seen a lot of transmission there. Okay, thank you, Karen. Can you speak to anything regarding the vaccine coming to Gloucester? I sure can. Um, this is, you know, really hopeful for us. We are very excited. The vaccines have, have very high efficacy rates. Um, I want to remind people that they've been through a very rigorous testing more. They've undergone more testing than and scrutiny than the average uh, pharmaceutical product that you would buy or get a prescription. Um, That's so good to hear. It is good to hear, but you know, people people need to to do the education. Once we know what vaccines are coming, we found out today that matern Moderna is approved, and it is the likely one that will come to places like the health department. Um, the deep freeze Pfizer one did come last week, and our Addison Gilbert and Beverly Hospital staff have been vaccinated, which is great news. These people have been exposed for ten months, working tirelessly in very high risk setting. So they can now know that they have some level of protection, pretty high level of protection against this strain of COVID. Um, there's a lot we don't know. You know, we don't know how many doses. We don't know exactly when we'll get them. We don't know how long they will keep, how long the immunity will last for, whether this will be an annual vaccine or um, we just don't know yet. But we know that the initial data on the vaccines that are available to us now is very, very good and they will save a lot of lives. So, That's um, awesome. yeah, it is awesome. And, our, I mean, it's hopeful, but we can't let our guard down. Absolutely not. Um, you know, and the other piece of that is the virus may mutate. And some of you may have heard, you know, news in the last few days out of Britain that there is a strain of COVID that's a little bit different. So, again, uh, that might you know, that's not good. Um, and if our vaccine for this strain is not as effective against the new strains, then we're going to need to vaccinate people more regularly or um, we're not out of the woods yet. And until, you know, 80%, 70% of the population gets the vaccine, we won't stop the spread of it. There'll still be a lot of movement and there'll always be people who are unable or unwilling to get the vaccine and they will not be protected. So that's why the rest of us need to. Um, in terms of the planning locally, we did receive word on Friday that health departments can ask for through the state, they can say if they have readiness to accept the vaccine, store the vaccine, bill for the, the uh, staff administration of the vaccine, all of those complicated things that go into vaccine management and distribution. If you have readiness, um, the state is taking applications on Wednesday from health departments who are willing to do it. And we have a phenomenal team. We, we have been expecting this, planning for this um, under Kelly Hyland, our public health nurse, and with our chief of police, uh, sorry, chief, our um, emergency manager and chief of fire, Eric Smith. 
we'll be putting a team together and, and hopefully an application if we can figure out all the logistics. So our team is working really hard with the mayor's office and our other towns nearby to see if we can get all of the things in place that we need to accept vaccine early January to vaccinate our first responders. And, um, you know, we would very much like to do that. It means that the vac vaccine, excuse me, would get to folks sooner and it would be done by our trained staff that know the community, know the first responders. Um, so we're excited about that. It's a big undertaking. Um, we're all kind of tired, but we feel like this is a really hopeful next step that we want to try to push forward and make happen. Uh, Karen, I have a question. Is Jim, um, if uh, some people are talking about or some people are mentioning that they're worried about the vaccine and sickness and all these other things, is there anything you can address to that? Uh, sure. And I think when the vaccines come out, you know, people can get educated on the specific vaccines. Uh, like a flu vaccine, like a lot of vaccines, there can be some little side effects the next day of uh, cold-like symptoms or things. Um, and so that's not unusual or unexpected. There are very few really severe adverse outcomes. Um, been a few people who have had serious allergic reactions. And when I say that, I think there's like two documented in the so far worldwide, um, but maybe more, I don't know. Um, and that's why we have people wait for 15 minutes after the vaccine. They'll have to wait and be watched and we'll have a medical team available should anyone have a reaction. Um, like anything in life, I mean, some people in the population will be allergic to pretty much anything. So when you expose a lot of people to something new, um, same thing with other vaccines, medications, food, there's going to be a couple of people who are allergic to something in the vaccine um, and may have an allergic reaction. And so you want to be able to address that and have um, staff and EpiPens available to to accommodate that. So it's very rare though, you know, those reactions are very rare um, and it still doesn't outweigh the risk to the community and to most people of getting the vaccine. Um, the vaccine has not been advised yet for people under 16. So I don't know what that data looks like and what the hesitation could be that they just haven't studied it yet, or it could be that it's not as effective with people under 16. Um, but in terms of adults, there's very few side effects quite like the flu. But I encourage people to do, you know, do their own research, look at the vaccine. When you come for the vaccine um, with your doctor or us or whatever clinics, there will be also a fact sheet with um, all kinds of information and then a, a number where to call if you do have problems or questions. Again, as every vaccine, uh, we offer that. That's so, well, a wealth of information that people probably didn't know prior to listening. So uh, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, uh, ben Loomis was going to be with us. You know, I, it was probably my fault that he didn't get the I, – I might have sent – Karen, did I send you the, um, the link earlier in the week or did I just send it out this morning? I think just I used the email this morning. I can't. I think yeah, yeah. it might be because I didn't follow up sooner. Uh, with yeah, him. Ben and I work really closely together every day with the schools. So um, he's probably exhausted and maybe forgot today. I don't know, but um, he, you know, we do a lot of work together with the schools. The contract tracing team that is under the health department talks daily with his team. Um, in the school, the school nurses. So if you do have questions, um, I, I'm not Ben, but I do have a, a kind of handle on what is happening in the schools and some of the new testing they're doing. So if there's something you want to. So how are, how are they handling? Like, Because Gloucester has um, handled in school. Uh, there's very few schools that seem to be doing that. Uh, Nicole and um, and. Um, Paul Harbor Light Montessori, they've been doing it. Uh, our, our Gloucester contributors here, uh, and um, but Gloucester as a public school, there's very few public schools that have had in school the whole way. Do you, how has that been going, and how? Uh, I mean, there hasn't there hasn't been any shutdown, has there, or is there just a brief one or none? We haven't hit any of the education department's thresholds, which are some um, 
like points you can reach in COVID that you re you request testing. Uh, at that point, we would have an epidemiologist from the state working really closely with us to see um, how to manage the situation and whether we need to close a room or not. So basically, those thresholds are things like two children in one classroom or two people can be a teacher and a child, um, three kids on a bus, three kids in a grade or a percentage. Like there's there's various thresholds and they're pretty low. Um, but the idea is if you reach any of them, you and and the and the uh, transmission happened in the school. So one kid gave it to another or a teacher to a kid. Then you want to quickly get in there and do some testing. So the state offers free testing for schools. Um, should they reach any of those thresholds? We haven't reached any of them yet since October. We've wow. certainly had some cases, but we've not had any spread of our cases. They seem to get it outside of school. And then we have not had any transmission within the school. So that is amazing. And we are so, so proud. My, the nurses on our team tell me all the time when they speak to teachers, nurses in our district or parents, even kids, they know the protocols, they're following them, they're taking it seriously. So, you know, again, it's not where we're seeing transmission. We see transmission in people's homes. When they go home, they let down their guard. Um, if one member's sick, the whole house usually gets it because it is pretty infectious, pretty contagious. Um, and we're seeing it for small private gatherings in people's homes, but we're not seeing it in schools. And that's kind of universal too. Um, I think at some point, you know, some communities have to close their schools because they're worried about in transmission or because they don't have the staff to keep going. So um, we certainly have had members of the school community who need to quarantine because they were exposed either, um, you know, they sat within the range of someone who had COVID who tested positive. So they were a close contact. Um, and the mayor saying Gloucester Public Schools rock, they do. I mean, they, they have been so committed to the safety of our kids and the big picture for our kids. I cannot say enough. And the research coming out every day virtually on the effects of the negative public health effects of kids not going to school. Um, obesity is skyrocketing. We are seeing rates of obesity in children skyrocketing. Pediatricians are concerned. We are seeing depression, anxiety. Um, there are huge, huge public health risks for kids not being in school. So I applaud Ben and his team and those children who wear their face coverings all day. Um, and, you know, that has been the, the, through the mayor's office, the school committee, Ben and his team and the health department collaborating all the time on whatever they need. We've answered questions. We've had parent calls to answer questions. In the beginning, people were really scared and I don't blame them. It was really uncertain how it would roll out. But I think now there's a comfort level um, and I think it's really super important these kids get to school. For some kids too, it's a warm, safe place where there's food. Um, so these things are really important. Um, and for all kids, I think that structure, that so kids are social beings like all of us really. So um, I'm thrilled. I, I, you know, we just continue to watch really, really closely every day. Ben watches his resources, a um, lot of support from Mike Hale and the DPW to that team in the schools to make sure they have what they need and that the schools are cleaned regularly and um, the air quality is good. So, you know, it's it's been great. And it's not to say we haven't had some cases or we might need at some point to shut a class or stop it for a week or two, but we just haven't seen it um, at this point. So That's amazing with the, the sheer number of children that there's uh -huh. low, I mean, it's low transmission, not not even just like, you know, being sick of it and, 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 and or whatever, because we understand that children are, are, you know, more resilient with this, but there's just the transmission of it with that huge volume of children to, yep. to in going to school daily. Now, is it average class size? Is it is it smaller or is it the same size as there was last year? I'm not sure. I know there are some um, kids who are studying remotely and who have chosen to stay remote, some families. And I know they 
they do a bit of a hybrid program. So, you know, the students aren't coming in all day, every day, but I think they're coming in most days for uh, most of the day. Wow. So, uh, yeah, you know, they've just kind of been super creative and trying to get the six feet wherever they possibly could. And that's, that's cut down on the number of contacts there has been when there has been a clo- uh, when there has been a case. It's yeah. a lot less contacts. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Anything you want to add in closing? Um, I don't think so. Other than just please be safe and, and try for just get through these holidays. I know they're weird. Zoom a lot. Uh, and um, try very hard to be super safe through the holidays um, and limit that close personal interaction as much as possible. Vaccines on the way, springs on the way where we know there tends to be less cases. So things will improve, but we've, we've got a little, little final stretch here. Hang in there, everybody. And happy holidays. Thank you so Thank much, you, Karen. That was, great. Uh, that was great. Have a good day now. You too. She's great. She's fantastic. She's, yeah. very, she's was, real good. You know, well- Joey, I just I have to say, you know, Nicole and I work in a small school and, you know, and I know how hard we work to keep that little school safe. And I just I I'm just in awe of uh, folk like the, the city of Gloucester schools. You know, the, the volume and the scale is so much bigger. Uh, so hats off to them. Absolutely. Well, that's it. Um I really appreciate you guys coming on today. It's Christmas week. Um, we'll be back on Sunday, and um, this was a fantastic, fantastic podcast. Yeah. We didn't have any. We didn't really have a. Oh, we should uh, mention Joe Higgins one more time. Yeah. What's Joe Higgins doing? Oh, we got to do a. We have to do we a have drawing, to drawing as well too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so if you sh- okay, quickly, if you share the podcast, like shared in the in the comments, you have a chance to win this drift We're up to thirteen. Wow, thirteen drift soap uh, bag right here. Uh, a basket uh, with with several soaps and a clamshell in the basket itself. Uh, but from Drift Soap, you can find them on Facebook. Um, so we're going to draw that in a second. And also, Impressions is coming up. Joe Higgins at Fish Impressions in Rockport at his Rockport shop. He's giving away a, uh, either a placemat or a, or a neck gaiter. And if you purchase one of his, you know, higher priced prints you will get a $100 gift card to Tono. Um, so that's really awesome as well. Uh, so, okay, we'll give people like three more, three more, four, four more seconds. Four to... more days of shopping <laughs> left. All right, uh, let me just get this. So we have 13. 13 shares so far. 13 shares. All right, I'm going to put it just on me for one second here. Uh, whoop. All right, and one to 13. One, two... 13. So you have to be able to pick it up. And if you don't pick it up, you just have to designate someone else to take the prize. Uh, oops. Uh, 1 to 13. This is going to be it right here. Here's our. Oh, it's, it's in focus and everything. Okay, there it is. Number, Number three. three is Mike Favaza. Mike Favaza, first time winner. Yes, I think so. First time winner, Mike Favaza. Uh, come down the dock, 95 East Main Street. Uh, you have to pick it up by next sun before next Sunday. And obviously, we're not here for Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. So you can come and get it. Uh, Mike Favaza is the winner winner chicken dinner. Uh, thank you to Trish Clinch for, the, for, the, for uh, supplying that prize. Uh, for the rest of the cast, let me get everybody back here. Where am I? For the rest of the cast, uh, for Pat and Jimmy Dalpiaz, Jimmy Capillo, Paul Horowitz, Nicole Schraft, Chris McCarthy was with us earlier, Karen Carroll. Uh, am I missing anybody? No. Joey, I'm your host, Joey Shimataro. Uh, thank, thank you all for joining us. This was a, a ton of fun. Okay. Merry Christmas. I'll see you guys. Have yourself.